Alrighty, folks, Mr. Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger had their uh, Oracle of Omaha event, the Woodstock of Capitalists this weekend. Wanted to ask Taylor what his takeaways were and share a particular quote that I thought was interesting. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Yeah, it was interesting. I, I, I thought that they did a nice job, as they always do. Didn't make as much broad economic commentary that I thought they would. Um, and that was indicative also of their annual letter, which didn't do it as much as, as they normally do as well. But um, just the, the stuff that comes out of their mouth, they're so punchy. They're so sharp. They're so swift. Um, they, 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 you know, kind of cut the legs down on a little bit of the AI fairy dust that's out there and says, you know, I like the traditional intelligence, I think is what is what Charlie said. But anyway, yeah, go ahead. So Warren Buffett had a basically a question or a thesis around value investing. Uh, and basically, B Buffett explained value investing. What gives you opportunities is other people doing dumb things. Yep. I'm like, exactly. And we've seen a lot of people do dumb things over the last couple of years. Yeah, I was going to say the second part that it was that we see more people doing dumb stuff than we have. Yeah, uh, I, I totally agree. Because what happens is it pushes valuations on things that are in the limelight to extremes. So as a value investor, you can look at this on both sides. So as a value investor, you say, hey, if my company that I own gets that light shined upon it, I have to trim as it runs because the value just isn't there anymore. But then naturally money, if it's going here, is not going here, opportunity costs. And all of a sudden what you have is better valuations in cheaper places with good operators that you can step in and buy on the cheap. And then when the pendulum swings back from the tech sector, which is ultimately what's driving all of the growth of the S&P 500 this year, if you take seven companies out, it's negative. Um, if, it, if the money's not going there and all of a sudden starts to look for a new landscape to sit upon, then your companies can obviously get that massive tailwind. Yeah. And the, again, in a real estate segment, I thought that was wonderful because, again, in my world, the dumb things were A, limited partners piling into brand new syndications. We already saw a hundred million dollars blow up in a Houston apartment deal. More of that coming and not to be outdone. I think there's going to be an Airbnb bust. There were a lot of people that bought based on, uh, I don't know, valuations or attendance or whatever you call occupancy from 2020 and 2021, very bad years. They bought in second markets with weird debt. And there's gonna be a lot of people that get hurt there. So I just love that. Cause again, that's exactly what happens is, in real estate, a lot of people just assume it's easy. They pile in. It gets crazy. I run away, and then it blows up. And then you go back in, and you pick over the the scraps, and you see what's left. It's interesting that you mentioned the Airbnb. Um, I don't actually spend much time on social media. I generally just kind of get on and get off it because I spend too much time posting my own stuff. But one of the things I do perpetually see just on my homepage as I, as I land on there is people that have been that are 25 years old, 35 years old, that are loaded driving Rolls Royces, driving these crazy cars. And then they back into their story of they own 19 different Airbnb properties that are all leveraged to the gills. Yes. And they have a management company. They're not dealing with themselves. Their life is so easy and they talk a lot about it and it's all taken care of for them. The banks finance their projects. It's exactly right. That's There's no coming. such thing as a free lunch. There can no. be for a short period of time, yeah, but I think windows. the Airbnb, I think your Airbnb comment is really sound and it hasn't come home to roost yet because although we're fighting inflation, we've done a really good job on the goods front, bringing down the cost of goods. Correct. The cost of services has not rolled over yet because there's still a demand outstanding for that. The Fed's gunning for it. The Fed is oh, actively coming. saying we want leisure and hospitality to slow down because that's what's spurring on inflation right now. And when that happens, that is that Airbnb owner. Yeah. So uh, I guess one thing as we wrap up our discussions today, you know, I think that session went on for like four hours. They divided it up because, you know, these guys are old, right? I think Charlie's like 99 or something. Um, yes. What were kind of the other takeaways you'd have from this weekend's discussions that you saw? Yeah, I think it's just the overall kind of somber mentality that they provide that speaks to long-term investing, speaks to actually understanding. What, <clears throat> one of the things I disagree with them on, so Charlie talks about, he talked about diversification. I saw that, right? yeah. And, yeah. And, and I think it's a very fair point. It's a valid point. There is a point where you can over-diversify, but Charlie doesn't realize that they are doing fundamental analysis on companies. So he talks oh. about, hey- if I only have three good ideas of three great businesses, that's all I want to invest in. And what I want to say to Charlie is like, the people that you're speaking to largely and broadly, 
don't do any fundamental analysis. Yeah, they don't exactly. know which three great companies are. So they have to diversify and spread their bets because if they just go out and buy Tesla or Tesla and NVIDIA, Tesla's, you know, taking on the chin right now, NVIDIA is doing great, but not, nothing to say that that couldn't roll over. Like there is apps absolutely value to diversification. And I think that unless you're doing fundamental work, which is what they're doing, diversification is the name of the game, in my opinion. Yeah, the one takeaway for me that I had is when Warren Buffett talked about Berkshire Hathaway's earnings and basically basically admitted that the next couple of quarters aren't going to be great, yeah. that his yeah. managers were like, that yeah. surprised us how quickly that turned. Because again, my thesis was March 12th, March 13th, the consumer got scared, the consumer gets scared, they stopped spending, and that's going to ripple through. And, and Buffett basically said his managers were shocked at the consumer change so quickly. Yep. Yep. And he outright said earnings will be negative for the companies that we own. And it, yeah. it was it was interesting for him to be so blunt and honest and straightforward with that, because obviously there's a response on the back end to what he says to yeah. the underlying value of the companies that he owns, because people herald everything he says. And he said, listen, face the facts, look at the numbers. Yeah. And that's one of the things that like I'm trying to pull my hair out right now because I can't figure out why the market continues to go up. Besides yeah. the fact that seven companies uh, have mentioned AI 50 times on their conference calls and people think it's going to absolutely, you know, revitalize and, and, and rejuvenate the economy as a whole. I, I have questions about that. I also, you know, like to put point backwards and say, like, don't you remember vir virtual reality that yeah. was uh, Meta the metaverse last year or the year before? Yeah, the metaverse. Like, what happened to that? And I'm not yeah. saying AI isn't going to be useful and create further efficiencies. It certainly will. But it's acting like it's going to solve everyone's problem on the globe right now. I'm not sure that's the case. Yeah. Taylor, where can people follow you? Yeah, follow us at Life Goal Investments. It's, uh, we're on Instagram and TikTok putting out daily stuff on markets. There you go, buddy. Thanks.